Muy buenas gente, aquí Mau y en este vídeo os enseñaré a cómo conseguir los logros o trofeos Pacificadora y Otro Gigante. Ambos se realizan en el final bueno del juego. Para ello debemos convencer a nuestro compañero de que no ataque a la nube y tras ello debemos sobrevivir con Yasna hasta la llegada de El Invencible. Todo se basa en la elección de diálogos del final, así que muy atentos de elegir lo mismo que elegí yo. I understand, yes. Although it's hard to talk about revenge here. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. And probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. That's why I would consider this problem in the category of neutralization. Not vengeance, after all. Nothing guarantees the flies will stay on Regis III if they continue to evolve. Wait a minute, Doctor. Even if they were to master space navigation, wouldn't it take hundreds of thousands of years? Millions of years, even, considering the evolutionary timeline. However, they could threaten humanity much sooner by sheer chance. Not a chance I'm willing to take. It's not over yet. If we factor in sheer chance, We might as well get killed by a meteor. No, Novik. It's not a meteor or an ocean or a storm. They don't hunt or degrade or cripple you mentally. You and Hitler are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget, Hitler. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? 
They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react. To radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications to thwart the exchange of information. So... They see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking us? Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasin found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for this. How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Our cyberneticist had a hypothesis before we lost consciousness. About the Lyrans. Yes, fair one. The Lyrans. Lyrans. It does ring a bell. Wasn't there a book about them? The Cravens monograph. According to his notes, before the explosion of Zeta Lyra, the sixth planet of the system was inhabited by intelligent beings. Let's say their scout ship landed here and that a disaster occurred. Some kind of reactor explosion, chain reaction. Suffice to say, the wreckage that landed on Regis 3 had no living beings on board. <sighs> Only the machine survived. And then what? They started bashing at each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotions. They don't argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis 3. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they already defeated the living organisms, why keep producing themselves? It makes no sense. What is the guiding principle of a homeostat? To survive. A apparently the machines pose a threat to one another. They use the same source of energy to function. A common, finite resource. Okay, but why did some flies survive this? Not something bigger and better. The way I see it, they were better. The best. In necroevolution, the bots that used up the fewest resources won. So they miniaturized, or became sedentary. The former process gave rise to the cloud. The latter started this bizarre genre of, of metal structures resembling vegetation, which formed the city. And they're still growing? No. They lost the fight for survival, and now they're just rusting remnants. Only one form survived the flying microbots that conquered all land areas on Regis 3. So these flies were just the best adapted? To the conditions of this planet? Yes, that's how it works. So, to summarize, some alien race sent advanced robots to Regis 3. The local dinosaur-like monsters tried to eat them. So the robots produced other robots, which produced more and more robots, until they fell victim to their own overproduction. After a number of iterations and wars for resources, they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I'd even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. 
Yes, sir. Do you agree? Well... If this is gonna work, the attack must be all out. What are you saying, Doctor? After a sufficiently powerful explosion, the ocean waters will begin to vaporize. Cloud cover will increase. The albedo will rise. And the resident symbionts won't be able to provide the minimum energy needed for reproduction. So yes, we can destroy the cloud. Ha! I knew it! Along with ourselves. Oh. You don't think we can defeat them and survive? Technically, we'd have to wipe out the entire planet. That's not our goal here, is it? No, it's not. So, you think there's no point trying with smaller charges? We would risk our lives for nothing. So yeah, I am against bombing. We won't help anyone this way. <sighs> but what else can we do if not attack? The Invincible is near. We can wait for its arrival. Huh, right. That is one solution. Although I was hoping you'd come back to Dragonfly. Back home. Huh. I'm done. Warheads are armed. One more press of a button, and there'll be no turning back. I can't. Ah, uh, that was close. I'm suspending all actions leading to conflict. But what should I do now? Well, we have a lander. So you can get to the Dragonfly. All of us? I'm staying. What? What? I'm staying here. We'll wait for the Invincible together. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Someone has to warn them, Astrogator. And Rahitra is... well... Don't sugarcoat it, Yasna. I think we're all aware of my condition. Yes, the doctor reported it. Because of this and many other reasons, I feel I must stay. Uh, well, I need to check on the guys. It was good talking, Astrogator. See you in a minute, Yasna. Yeah. Take care. So, he's gone. Doctor. Yes, no. It was truly an honor. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the right words. I know I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Sometimes. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm extremely grateful to you. You could have flown away so many times, yet you stayed with me until the end. Thank you. You shouldn't thank me. It was my bounden duty as commander. My only regret is that I couldn't do more. And that some decisions... Please don't blame yourself anymore. There's no point. Now Kovel, Krauter and Gorski need you. Understood? Yes, Mom. Have a safe journey, Novik. Thank you, yes. And... See you soon. Over and out. Are you sure? Yeah. You look... <laughs> like shit. I know. Oh, really tired. That's what I meant to say. Because you're trying to be polite. The undeniable truth is, I look and feel like shit. <sighs> Will you close it for me? <sighs> of course. Support and stimulants will help you. I won't sleep. I can't. You know that. I have to endure somehow. I admit I would do the same in your place. Thinking about losing yourself, your memories, it scares me. But that doesn't mean I should help you hurt yourself. Primum non nature. You're not hurting me, Aston. You'll actually make sure I don't hurt myself. Like the dumbass I am. It's a strange feeling. 
remaining conscious in the hibernator. <laughs> you clearly haven't visited the infirmary often. This is a standard procedure for a long recovery. Will you take another look at Landor and Spluskas? I'm doing it now. Don't worry. Thanks. But are you still wondering whether to go to the nest? This is probably your last chance. If you want to make it before the Invincible arrives, it would be good to have you here when they come. No, I'm not going. I know it's a unique opportunity to get closer to this phenomenon, and I might never get another chance, but I've thought about it a lot, and I'd rather stay here with you. Now rest. You should save your strength for their arrival. sun, night is not that scary. Oh, at last, they've arrived. Rahitra, do you hear? They're landing now. Huh? 